Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this presentation entitled Precision Measurement Instruments for Machineries Mechanical Compliance, Design and Operation. My name is Nicholas Tyson, and I have the pleasure to present to you my research contributions to the field of compliance measurements of machine tools and industrial manipulators. Today's agenda. This presentation consists of five sections. The first section focuses on conventional metal cutting, compliance measurement of machine tools, and it introduces the research questions. The second section focuses on precision engineering design principles, which are good practices in the mechanical design process to minimize random and systematic errors. The third section focuses on precision engineering operation principles, which ensure reproducible experimental compliance measurements. The fourth section introduces a case study of an elastogeometric machine tool measurement and it answers the research questions. Finally, this presentation ends with a summary of the ongoing work and it outlines the potential next steps to support compliance calibration. Let's start. Background. The product of a metal cutting process is created through the relative movement between the workpiece and the tool center point. Video 1 and video 2 show examples of milling, that is a metal cutting process with a geometrically defined cutting edge for a machine tool on the left hand side and for an industrial manipulator on the right hand side. Mechanical compliance is one of the main design criteria of machine tools as it affects the position of the tool center point under load. To experimentally determine the mechanical compliance of a system one can resort to the guidelines provided by ISO 230 or ISO 9283, which provides a static stiffness measurement. However, the Department for Production Engineering at KTH proposes quasi-static stiffness measurement that is under slow movement of those systems. The results of this work are meant to contribute to the understanding of the opportunities and limitations of precision measurement instruments for compliance calibration and validation for machine tools and industrial robots under movement. And this is meant to enable an operational optimization through on and offline trajectory compensation. That is what one can see in figure one. Figure one shows the position difference over an angular, over the circular trajectory between an uncompensated, which is in the dashed lines and a compensated, which is in the solid lines For an improved understanding of today's presentation, we have to define the terms mechanical compliance and precision. Mechanical compliance is the relationship between a mechanical load that is applied to a structure and the resulting change of its geometry in terms of distance, position or orientation. Figure 1 visualizes the application of a force on the tool center point and its resulting deflection. This is most commonly depicted by using Hooke's law, which one can see in equation 1. Precision, in the sense of this work, refers quantitatively to the magnitude of the deflections which we are looking into. And that is deflections from a range from 0.1 micrometer to 10 meter and then uncertainties from 0.1 micrometer to 100 micrometer. Research questions. This work summarizes and applied precision engineering design as well as operation principles to develop precision measurement instruments for machinery's mechanical compliance. And the first research question is, what are the most important precision engineering design principles for precision measurement instruments to ensure accurate and repeatable compliance measurements on machine tools, and in particular for the three-dimensional loaded double ball bar? The second research question is, what are the most important precision engineering operation principles to ensure accurate and repeatable compliance measurements on machine tools? And both of these questions relate more to the pragmatic question of how accurately can one experimentally measure Cartesian stiffness? To answer these research questions, this work is based on literature review, experimentation and a peer review 
of my engineering as well as scientific contributions. These contributions can be seen in figure two. They're, chronolo they're chronologically ordered, they're given according to the type of machinery which we're looking into, and they're also color-coded according to the four phases of manipulator calibration, going from modeling, measurement, identification to the implementation. In figure one, I was referring to the results of the COMAC project, and that is a project for industrial manipulators because Together with my co-authors, I've been able to implement compliance calibration coming from the modeling to the implementation. And we've been showing that uh, quasi-static compliance calibration has been successfully implemented. When it comes to machine tools, this work is limited to only modeling and measurement thus far. One more note when it comes to the later on presentation is that the publications are not on a chronological order with respect to the answer to the research questions given because those scientific contributions focus more on the measurement procedures rather than the measurement instrument, which is mainly covered in the thesis itself. Precision engineering design principles. One potential definition for precision engineering design principles is that these are established rules or good practices for application in the mechanical design process to minimize random and systematic measurement errors of precision measurement instruments. And the principles that one will find most commonly referred to can be seen here, the enumeration 1 to 11, which are based on a work by Pat McEwen, which are referred to as his 11 principles or techniques. And from my point of view, these techniques are part of the mechanical design process in that design engineers use them in order to check the feasibility of a product in the product definition, conceptual design, as well as in the product development phase. And that is what we're going to do as a part of today's presentation. Figure 2.1 shows the conceptual measurement setup of the three-dimensional loaded double ball bar, which is a device for quasi-static load yield circular testing of five axis machine tools. It exerts a load along the force vector, which is highlighted in red, to measure the displacement of the tool center point uh, given as delta P in figure 2.1. Due to the time constraints of today's presentation, we are only going to look into the structure, kinematic and quasi-kinematic design, metrology frames, as well as uncertainty budgets. Structure. Mechanical structures position and orient their components, and they change these poses under forces and moments as a result of their change in geometry. Structure is an important aspect for the metrology frame of the three-dimensional loaded double ball bar, which can be seen in figure 2.3. The figure shows the metrology frame holding the direct displacement transducers, which are oriented towards the center of the sphere, which are required to measure the position of the sphere. For this, the metrology frame employs three probes, labeled probe 1 to 3, and based on the suspension points of these three probes, together with their measurement values, one can employ the principle of trilateration in order to identify the position of the sphere. And the structure is important as the more the triangle, which defines the suspension points of the three direct displacement transducers, is an equilateral triangle, the better the identification of that center point will be. An example of the trilateration will now be visualized for the two-dimensional case in the XY plane that we can imagine the measurement value to essentially be a radius around that suspension point. And if we're using exactly three probes, you can see that they're going to intersect at one point exactly. And that is the position of the center of the sphere as identified from the trilateration. Kinematic and quasi-kinematic design. Kinematic couplings employ point contacts to exactly fully constrain the components to maintain a stress-free condition and high positioning repeatability. From process planning, you might be familiar with the 3 to one concept, meaning that if you are having three, two, and one point contact, you are able to exactly fully constrain the degrees of freedom of a solid body in three-dimensional space 
that is if all of these three points are mutually orthogonal. Then one is able to, from these point contacts, actually identify a deterministic or an analytic solution to the coupling in itself, which offers the highest positioning repeatability. However, if there are high contact stresses in these areas, the contact points are going to deform into contact ellipses due to the Hertzian contact stresses. Then one might want to employ quasi-kinematic design, also called pseudo-kinematic couplings, and these are the ones that by themselves directly employ convex and groove mates as well as circular protrusions, resulting in line type of contacts. And that is what is visualized in figure 2.6, where we can see the kinematic constraints of the table link. And we see that it consists of a sphere as well as of a centering ring. And in orange, we can see the connection points between the two systems. And if we are looking into the XY plane top view, then we can see that we are actually over constraining the system, forcing congruence onto the body because we are using six point contacts rather than actually employing three contacts. Metrology frames. The components of the measurement instrument form force and thermal loops as well as metrology loops, also so-called frames. The force and the thermal loops contain all the components which are in the flow of the mechanical and thermal loads. This can be seen in figure 2.8 which shows the conceptual measurement setup for the three-dimensional loader double ball bar. The double-headed red arrow is indicating the force vector which is exerted by the system which goes between the table link and the tool adapter and we do not want to redirect the forces or that is the thermal loads through the metrology loop, that is the loop uh, that contains all the components required to perform the measurement, as that would introduce an error to our measurement by instead of deflecting the machine tool would deflect our metrology system. As you can see, the metrology system as it is right now, it is connected to the machine tool table as well as to the machine tool spindle, meaning that when the machine tool table is going to move, then uh, the metrology frame is going to move with the table and otherwise the spindle is going to deflect, which enable us to measure the relative stiffness between the table and the machine tool spindle. Okay, now that we have considered three out of the 11 principles, we might think that applying all the principles could lead to a measurement instrument with infinite accuracy and repeatability. But that is not the case, unfortunately. That is, there's still a limitation of the measurement instrument. In order to express that limitation, one uses an uncertainty budget. And an uncertainty budget is defined as a statement of the measurement uncertainty, of the components of that measurement uncertainty, and of their calculation and combination. And Table 2.1 lists the most important uncertainty contributors through the three, for the three-dimensional loaded double ball bar, which are the magnitude of the force, the orientation of the force, as well as the magnitude of the deflections in Cartesian space. Combining the information from the three contributors, we can create the graph that results in figure 2.15, which shows the relative uncertainty in any Cartesian stiffness measurement that we can perform. On the x-axis, you see the force given in Newton, and you can see that the relative uncertainty decreases with higher load levels. That is due to some of the components that we use to exert the force in the uh, loaded double ball bar. And then on the y-axis, you can see the Cartesian stiffness uncertainty as a percentage. The lines that you can see are given for different stiffness values. That is the Cartesian stiffness of different objects. And we can also see that for objects that are stiffer than 50 newton per micrometer, that there is an uncertainty of more than 5% in those measurements. Uh, this might strike you as significant with respect to most machine tools, given that the most machine tools are designed with about 80 newton in the weakest direction up to the spindle. However, we are actually performing those measurements under operational conditions, meaning at the tool center point, where we usually find that the machine has stiffnesses in the range of 10 to 20 newton per micrometer. Now I would like to explain where this data comes from. And we start with the magnitude of the force, that is the calibration of the force output. And for this, I would like to say that the 
loaded double bar acts at a piston and the pressure in that is closed loop controlled by a proportional pressure control valve. And what we have done is that we have created a measurement setup on a machine tool where we have created a uniaxial force vector by centering the tabling sphere as well as the tool sphere and then setting the proportional pressure control valve over the whole operational range that is of the pressure that is uh, available based on the, the facilities to exert a force. And that is what you can see on the right hand side in figure three, where we can essentially see the voltage or the pressure and bar, which is uh, in parity due to the gain of the system. And on the y axis, we find the force output in Newton. And you can see that with increasing load, we have a decreasing uncertainty. That is, uh, we have a roughly an uncertainty of minus 1.5 Newton at a force of 136 Newton, while that we have roughly 0 0.5 at a magnitude of 630 Newton. This data has been obtained by five repeated measurements with an expansion factor of k is equal to 2 and the assumption of a uniformly distributed error. The next one is the magnitude of the Cartesian deflections. And to quantify this uncertainty contributor, a machine tool control instruction was to move the tool center point along vertices of a line at different distances of 1 in steps of 1 micrometer until 20 micrometer, 30, 50, 100, and 150 micrometer. And then we have measured these movements along the line using a laser interferometer as well as the metrology frame of the three-dimensional loaded double ball bar. Figure 4 on the right-hand side shows the measurement setup on one of the machine tools here at KTH. And figure 5 shows the differences of that measurement in the x, y, and z direction between the laser interferometer and the metrology frame of the loaded double ball bar. And the measurement coming from the laser interferometer hereby are considered the accepted reference value so the difference in micrometer in that case is essentially the difference between the laser interferometer and the metrology frame. And we can see that the greater the distance from the center of the metrology frame, the bigger the measurement error. This data has been obtained from five repeated measurements with an expansion factor of k is equal to 2 and the assumption of a normally distributed error. Precision engineering operation principles. These principles are meant to reduce measurement uncertainty and to separate superimposed errors that come from the reference object of the precision measurement instrument or from the machinery from the measurement itself. And we can take an example. That is, when we watch video three, we can see that the volumetric accuracy of the machine tool when moving along a circle in itself depends not only on the compliance of the machine, but essentially on the kinematics, dynamics, thermoelasticity, as well as the control system. All of these determine the volumetric accuracy. The only aspect that we would like to measure, though, is the compliance. And in order to do that, we need to be able to correctly attribute all the different errors into, its, into their constituents. And for that, we use four precision engineering operation principles, which is the machine-based coordinate system transformation, transient measurement data, error separation, and the mechanical base load reference. Due to the time constraints in today's presentation, we will only focus on the machine-based coordinate system transformation and the mechanical base load reference. Machine-based coordinate system transformation the measurement of machine tools and industrial robots requires the transformation of position and orientation data into the machine-based coordinate system. To do so, one has the possibility to employ linear motions, circular motions, or have it feature-based. This is visualized in figure 3.1. However, as this is hard to visualize, uh, let's look at video 4 and 5. And video 4 shows the application of linear movements by which we can essentially instruct the machine tool or robot to move along a linear line. Then we can measure that data, identify the unity vector, and from the unity vector we can identify the correct orientation or the correct transformation of the measurement data into the machine-based coordinate system. 
Another opportunity is to identify circles or to basically to instruct a circular movement. Identify the center of the circles and then the normal vectors to then identify the transformation. And based on the kinematic topology that we are looking at, there is a correct solution in order to minimize the uncertainty associated with it. As for example, on an industrial manipulator where we only have rotary joints, we would need to actually involve the control system in order to create a linear movement, meaning that we have different errors associated with the control of the system, such as truncation to create such a motion. The next aspect is the mechanical base load reference. And that is all measurements with any kind of loaded double ball bar device feature a mechanical base load reference. That is, that the stiffness of the machine tool or robot is identified as the difference of a loaded configuration with respect to another loaded configuration. Let's consider the following example. We have two different trajectories in figure six. There's one trajectory at 50 millimeter per second, and then there's another one at 500 millimeter per second. And from a theory point of view, we can assume that the kinematic arrows will show predominantly in the trajectory at 50 millimeter per second, while when we're looking into 500 millimeter per second, we will also find more uh, aspects coming from the dynamics or the control of the system. And the idea is to never use that data in order to identify the mechanical stiffness of the system, but to keep on increasing the load and then to only subtract those reference trajectories in order to make sure that we're subtracting the kinematic or dynamic error from the measurement data. Discussion and conclusion. As a part of this work, we have performed a case study for the simultaneous measurement of kinematic and compliance errors of a five-axis machining center using the three-dimensional loaded double ball bar for a BK4 test according to ISO 10791-6. This is what you see in video three. The video starts with the single movement of the C and the A axis, and the BK4 test is the combined movement of both these axes. So first you rotate the C axis, then we can see a rotation of the A axis, And in the BK4, it's a simultaneous movement of the both of them. The results of this case studies can be seen in equation 4.1 or in figure 4.2. And that is that we actually wanted to identify first the Cartesian stiffness of the machine tool. What, that is what you can see in equation 4.1. And you can find that the mean the max as well as the minimum value identified as well as the uncertainty associated with the measurement. And what has been done is that first of all, measurements have been performed under load in order to identify the stiffness. And then once the stiffness have been identified, the identified stiffness has been used to perform a backward calculation to identify the kinematic error, what it is supposed to be according to the backward calculation. That is what you see for the solid green line and then compared that with a pure kinematic measurement for the blue line. From this, we can see that a measurement with a three-dimensional loaded double ball bar can accurately identify the Cartesian stiffness as well as the kinematic errors along a BK4 test. Let's answer the research questions now. So what are the most important precision engineering design principles for precision measurement instruments to ensure accurate and repeatable compliance measurement on machine tools? And for that, I would like to propose, based on their work conducted, a rough prioritization. That is, the first and foremost functional requirement of a measurement instrument for the measurement of mechanical compliance is to exert a controllable mechanical load while measuring the deflections in terms of distance, position, or orientation. And the structure, the other principle, kinematic and quasi-kinematic design, direct displacement transducers, metrology frames, and control systems directly support this. Then there are secondary principles which support the design improvement, measurement correction, and reproducibility, which are the uncertainty budgets, the error compensation, bearings, driving carriages, as well as thermal effects. I would like to state, though, that 
as I said at the beginning of the presentation, that for any design engineer, it is prudent as a part of the mechanical design process to check one's design against all of these principles. About the second research question then, what are the most important precision engineering operation principles to ensure accurate and repeatable compliance measurements on machine tools? I would like to answer this question in figure 5.2 and based on the work and from my experience, machine-based coordinate system transformation as well as a mechanical base load reference shall always be featured when one measures mechanical compliance. Then it depends on whether one wants to identify compliance and kinematics. If that is not the case, but one solely wants to focus on compliance and one wants to perform, does not want to perform a quasi-static measurement, then it is just sufficient to apply these two principles. However, if one wants to identify, uh, wants to apply a quasi-static measurement, then one also needs to consider that there will be transient measurement data. And if one wants to identify compliance as well as kinematics, then one also has to consider error separation on top of the transient measurement data. Outlook and future work. For the optimized operation of machine tools and industrial robots, one requires to continue developing measurement instruments, calibration procedures, as well as customized probe processes in order to actually implement the calibrated models of machine tools and industrial manipulators. At the department, we have been focusing on the further development of measurement instruments. One of these can be seen in figure 2.1, which is referred to as the dynamic three-dimensional loaded double ball bar, which measures the Cartesian stiffness not only as one scalar value, as we have seen before, but it essentially expresses, in this case, the KXX stiffness also as dependent on the application frequency coming from the cutting force. This concludes today's presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention.